What is going on, YouTube world? We are KRT Live, KRT Live with the Y, and we are back with another <laughs> vlog. And this vlog is all about the Lexus RX 350. Should you change your own alternator or not? We did it, and we're gonna tell you our experience with it. Coming up next. All right, so typically when we wrench in the parking deck, you usually see me and I get dirty and I do stuff like this. This particular alternator job is such a pain in the behind. Let me show you. My wife <laughs> had to even wrench uh, in the parking deck. Officially was a wrencher today. So Kat's mom, my mother-in-law, has a Lexus RX 350. And a couple weeks back, before we went on our trip to Dubai, it was having some issues with the charging system and I read up on it really quick, but because we were about to go on our trip, and according to everything that I said, it was probably well, that I read and everything that I did for my own uh, troubleshooting, suggested it was the alternator. Didn't really want to change the alternator though, because <laughs> changing the alternator in this car is insanely difficult from everything that I read. You gotta take all kind of stuff off. So I was like, oh, I hope it's the battery. Please let it be this battery. <laughs> So we swapped the battery out before we went on our holiday. It worked actually for quite a bit. It yeah. worked for about a month. Almost, almost. a month. Almost yeah. a month the car worked fine. And then one day we were at a friend's birthday party and then boom, we get a call. Babushka's car has gone dead again and she's stuck on the highway and we had to go and save her. So we towed the car home in the middle of the night and the next day we decided to dig into this project and see what we can do about it. And boy, whew. Man, it was a headache. So dreadful experience. <laughs> where where sure. do we even begin? <laughs> this right here is an alternator for a Lexus GX. No, not GX. RX, RX. 350. Man, it's it's pretty dirty. dirty. <laughs> ah, get out of there. Oh, I don't know if you want to put this on this table. Well, too late now. Anyway, the part was not hard to acquire. There was a quick pickup at the advanced auto parts that we did. And we decided we wanted to vlog this. <laughs> I don't think we realize how bad it's gonna turn out because we yeah. abandoned the mission halfway yeah, through. Yeah, we didn't even finish the vlog. Like, it was bad. So you pull the plastic bits off, right? That's the first thing that you do when you're doing this. Pull the plastic parts off. Everything was going fine. We were still vlogging. After that, um, I pulled out the fans. Fans, yeah. I went to pull the fans out. It took a little bit of doing, but it's not hard to pull the fans out. I mean, the fans are only held in with four bolts, but there's a lot of uh, sensors and stuff that are connected that you have to undo. And you have to be very, very careful of the actual uh, filler neck because the filler necks in these cars are very, very fragile and can break very easy. Ask me how I know. Go check out the starter video and you will see where I broke the filler neck. But if you do break your filler neck, it's not the end of the world. You can get another one at the parts store. So anyway, got all the hoses loose, got all the electrical connections loose, pulled the fan out. Um, then I had to take the, tire off. take the tire off. So you gotta go to the passenger side of the vehicle, jack it up, pull the passenger side tire off, and then you will see where the uh, pulleys yep. are and the tensioners and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is where it gets interesting because the way that this vehicle is designed, they leave you no room. Well, they leave you room, but barely any room to stick any type of tools in there to uh, take tension off the tensioner so you can get the serpentine belt off or to get to the actual alternator. So, <laughs> you gotta get creative. You gotta feel it. You can't not see anything. You just have to know and feel. That's all That's I all. gotta say. You have to know, you have to feel, you have to hope, and you have to pray. <laughs> All, preferably all together at the Prefer same yes, time. Yes, at the same time. So the first issue that we had was actually getting the pressure off the tensioner to take the serpentine yeah. belt out. Now, if you're a novice wrencher, um, you might not have these type of like narrow profile tools like this to be able to get to certain areas of cars. Because if you're trying to use something like this, it's going to be almost impossible to get this on to the tensioner. Like this isn't the tensioner, but let's say for sake of argument, this is where you're trying to get and you only have like this much space between the actual like socket that you're trying to get to and the body of the car. There's literally no room. It actually curves in towards the belt. It's the most insane design I've ever seen. So you definitely need low profile tools to even begin to think about doing this job. Now, once you get on that tensioner, none of the tools that I had was long enough for me to put enough torque on the tensioner to get the belt loose. 
So I had to use one of the old school tricks of taking a jack handle. Your old trick together, it took us several times because the angle, the way... Oh, yes, the, the, there's put, a funky angle. Yeah, you put that on, it's it's just... Oh! We're trying to lock it I was it trying so to lock the have... tensioner in place. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and that reason is why, because in order to get to one of the screws for this damn thing, excuse my language. You gotta get the tensioner out You have way. to get as much room as you possibly can, otherwise you just can't get there. You can't That's see it why. to begin with. Yeah. I completely but. forgot about this. See how traumatic this was? I completely even <laughs> forgot that it even happened. PTSD. So, you gotta torque that thing all the way down, take an Allen key, and you gotta push it through the tensioner mm -hmm. to lock the tensioner in place, which, like, is, I mean, God, it is very difficult to do by yourself like i probably wouldn't have been able to do it by myself so then once you get the tensioner stuck and you got it locked in place then you can pull the belt off mm -hmm. now you're going to get to the hardest part of this thing now there's three screws that hold this alternator in place right so most alternators have two screws or three screws and a tensioner bolt or something like that this one has three and two of them are one size and then the third one is a complete different size from the other two so one of the screws goes through like this and threads in through the top. There's another screw that goes on this side and threads this way. And then there's another screw that goes this side and threads this way. Why this side isn't symmetrical and it's just one screw that screws into it? Too easy. Too easy. <laughs> they just had to make it as hard as possible. Yeah. So what do we end up doing after that? Let me think because, man, my brain is just so flustered even thinking we about how crazy this We started trying to was. get to the screws after that point. Yes, so, so we did the top one first, which was supposedly the easy one. Because that's the only <laughs> one you can really see properly. Yep. So took that one apart. It was hard to get it all the way out, but it finally came that out. That one actually was stuck, remember? It was stuck, yes. It was stuck. It took it took actually a little while to unscrew that screw. I think I actually had to put the wrench, the, um, the, the, um, the, the jack handle on the actual wrench yes, because just to even get the, the, the screw. And while he's doing it, I'm thinking, oh my God, if this is the one that is easy access to and this is what it takes, how in the world do we got to unscrew the other two because you can't even see them? Finally, like after fighting with the first screw, got it loose. And then at this point, we're probably like three hours into the job, mm -hmm. maybe even a little bit longer than that, because yeah. it's just so hard to get into these uh, these areas. And I watched a couple of other videos, and everybody said, this is extremely hard. You can't see the screws. And I was like, I'm a professional wrencher. This can't be that hard. Wrong. <laughs> now, the second screw, when you look at this thing, so these screws are up like this, right? And then the belt is on this side and the, this alternator faces towards the front of the car like that, right? This one is down on the bottom in between the actual body of the car mm -hmm. and all the rest of the belts and pulleys and everything else that you have to get to. Maybe I should hold it like this so you can see it, but this is kind of heavy. No. Now, when I was looking through the crack from the bottom, through the, there's a little service area that you can open. I could see the screw, but I wasn't really sure if that was a screw because this thing is kind of recessed. So yeah. she had to look from the top and I had to look from the bottom and then I was putting my finger on random stuff like, does this look like it? Does that look like it? And then we finally just like, you know what, screw it. We're just gonna take this bolt loose Try and see it. what happens. So finally we pulled this, bo this, this bolt out, which was extremely difficult because I believe I had to use something like this mm -hmm. and I could only like crank it just a little bit like that at a time. And it took me probably all 30 minutes just to get that one screw out. Now. Got those two screws loose and for the most part out, and this thing was starting to gradually come loose. But now the fun part began. <laughs> the fun part began. I was like, okay, I got the screws out. Is there really a third screw holding this in? Like maybe they were just lying and there isn't a third screw holding it in. Wrong. There is a third screw that holds it in, and the third screw goes in back here on the back side. Now, if you're looking at this alternator and it's sitting in the engine, this third screw is the the exhaust manifold is right here covering this screw mm -hmm. and there is no way that you can get to it oh and the dipstick you got to pull the dipstick out to even to get it, your hands in there to even get to the thing and you still can't see it so there's a bracket that kind of curves like this and goes around in here that this cur that this connects to the only way that you can really feel this screw and know that you're touching the right thing is you gotta feel that bracket and kind of move your hand along it until you sure. get to the screw. And then you just gotta hope that that's the actual screw is so you don't know what you're doing like we didn't. So we finally were able to, I think we got in there with something like this. It was like a 12 or 13 yeah. millimeter. We got in there with something like, yeah, like that. And finally got in there and got it out. 
<laughs> so and then mind you we're not tall people so for us to get in there you had to lean your whole entire body inside of the damn truck and then like you know get your hand all the way in there try to get it and even understand what you're getting and that was just a whole other ball game that yeah, was not the next a comfortable day, my position. ribs my ribs are actually still kind of tender in my Sore. arm from just leaning in the car trying yeah. to get to this third screw i know my wrists were hurting i had bruises on my <laughs> on my arm on my fingers my ribs were also sore it yes. was just yeah so once we finally got the third screw out it was finally loose enough and we were finally able to pull this thing out which was also difficult yeah that just, was not an easy just okay, take it that. out. You have to wiggle you that thing wiggle in all kinds of ways. It because there's an AC hose in the way or AC pipe in the way, and just like yeah, it's just try to not to bend the radiator worse. pieces and yes. everything. It's try just... not to damage the radiator. And I was looking at this thing, and I was thinking like, okay, like Toyota must want you to pull the exhaust off, exhaust uh, manifold off, and the radiator to do this job, because there's no easy way to do this. Yeah. Because as soon as I got this off, I was like. I literally told my wife, I was like, I don't know how we're going to get this thing back in. <laughs> and at that point, we were almost already in the middle of the night. And I'm like, oh, God, we have to go to work in the morning. I had, to be, I had to get up for work at 4 a.m. And it was almost uh, 11 by that point. Yeah. So then we started doing the reverse, starting to trying to put this thing back in. And when I tell you putting this thing back in was a nightmare because, and the hardest part, honestly, well, the whole, it was, the whole thing was difficult. But getting this screw back in, because you can't see it, you can barely touch it, you don't know if you're screwing it in or not, and this whole thing is loose and kind and of moving like that. the screw is really little. So it's not like you have a big screw where you can kind of push it in like, oh, okay, well, it's in the right place, now I just have to tighten it no like it's this long so mm -hmm. you literally have to put it and start tightening like you don't you have no idea if it's in or not and it can also fall and drop and then that's a whole that other thing too. it fell several times and luckily we were able to find it but if it falls and drops somewhere and you don't find it you're pretty much just screwed yeah. so we tried and we tried and we tried and we tried to screw this thing back in we tried putting this screw in first we tried putting this screw in first and i mean we were just like almost like about to literally give up <laughs> yeah, was... i think we were doing we were on our last try like okay let's try this one more time if we're not putting it in we finishing for the day and then we're gonna pick it up tomorrow after he gets off work because it, we were exhausted we we're tired we we're frustrated middle of the night so but i think after we finally lined up this top screw reza yeah. went on the bottom to get this screw and I was working on this screw and at the same time we were able to actually push them both in and because he said I'm in I'm like me too it happened literally simultaneously we were, I was so we excited I was like oh in. my god so that was our last try our last attempt and it worked and it worked and literally we had to put this one through first the top one and we had to do these two bottom ones simultaneously yeah. to get this thing back in and somehow i, I swear it was a miracle <laughs> i don't <laughs> know how that happened, happened. yeah but it <laughs> happened i was so excited in. and then you gotta tighten the screws up which is a whole nother episode all i have to say i am so glad that you have so many tools that there is so many variations that we could have come up with to possibly fit because yeah. if we were limited we would have no never way. been able to finish this or we probably wouldn't have been able to take it off to begin with yeah but definitely would never be able to finish this. but we finally got it back in and once you get this thing back in everything else just kind of falls into place because it's simple things with tedious things putting the tire back in reconnecting the battery putting the fans back in, you know, testing everything before you crank it up, making sure that when you put the serpentine belt back on that nothing's like, you know, halfway on a pulley that and all that. That was so fun. Oh my God, that was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> that serpentine belt, oh my God. I swear, they probably looked at this car and be like, how we can put as many parts as we can with the littlest room possible. I, I think whoever whoever designed this car, it was a bad they, they were, uh, it was a bad design, but this person did this with malevolent intent and this person was a sadist and he was like, I'm gonna punish anybody who buys this car. This person probably was about to quit. So they just exactly. designed the thing be like, here, my, my last punch. But after we did all that, we finally got it back up and the car is finally running again and on the road and Babushka is very, very excited and happy that her car is working. Now, to conclude this vlog, should you do this job on your own? Never. I wouldn't. I, as I told at the end of that, 
halfway existed vlog. I was very proud of, of our accomplishment because this was extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. But I would have never done this again. This mm -hmm. is not like, oh yeah, you know what? I know that was challenging, but sure, let's try it again. No, that's a hard no. I will pay money. I will go get some extra gigs yeah. somewhere to pay money. I would not want to do this again. This was truly was complicated. It was frustrating. Mm -hmm. It was difficult. Yeah. I would say that if you're a person like myself, if you've been wrenching a long time and you have a lot of tools, like, you know, two sets of almost everything, uh, specialty tools to get into really tight areas, you know, if you have all the equipment and the ex expertise, then absolutely do it. But if you're a weekend warrior and you've only done like simple jobs, like oil changes yeah. and stuff like that, I would say absolutely do not do this job. Take it to somebody, let them do it for you. This job is very difficult, uh, even and, for a seasoned renter like myself. Yeah, and I would say if you have an option, if you decide to do this, you should have a second person on the standby because yeah. it was difficult on certain things. Yeah. And mind you, it depends on the size of your hand. Our hands are not huge. I think that's the only reason why we're able to get to those places. If your hand is a little bigger, you're probably going to have to take more things off of that car in order to put that back together because it's just, there is no way. Absolutely. So that's us. Uh, and that is our thoughts on doing the alternator job on the Lexus RX 350. Do so at your own risk. I'm not saying that you can't, but you probably shouldn't. And we will see you in the next vlog. Care to life, care to life with life with a Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all of that. Peace. Keep wrenching in the free world. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. But anyway, I think we just put her in the shot just to uh, give her a word and see how the car is running afterwards. Uh, I want uh, to say, Reza, uh, thank you very much about my car, about he fix my car. I'm very happy. Thank well, you. I guess it's thank running, you. so yay.